my life. Awesome. Hi, this is Katie from Big Commerce with Jess Melnick and a panel of lovely, lovely clients, expert clients, as a matter of fact. And we're talking PR blogger outreach today, which is a really kind of hot topic because as much as we want to talk about it, we don't tend to talk about it as much. We've got some people here to lend some advice to us. So first thing, let's meet who we have here today. Um, first and foremost, Paulita, if you'd like to introduce yourself, tell us your URL, which audience members, please feel free. Uh, Jess will be throwing that URL to you and just tell us what you do. Go ahead. Uh, we've got, we're based in Australia. We sell baby bean bags, the Chiba Bear Snuggle Pods. So it's Chiba Bear, C H I B E B E dot com dot A U. Right. Um, it's Australia's original baby bean bag and we ship uh, worldwide. And we're doing really, really awesome. well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, Nancy, can you tell us a little bit about you and your business as well? And Jess will be chatting your URL to the audience, too. Hi. Yeah, I'm Nancy Queen. I own noblenits.com. We are a knitting supplier for knitters around the world. We've been with Big Commerce for years, and um, our business is over 12 years old. So, 12 years old? Mm-hmm. You've been online for 12 years? Yes. Wow, that's awesome. I love that. You haven't been with Big Commerce the whole time. No, we've been with Big Commerce for about four years, and it was right. a really good move. Best move we made. Couldn't pay you to say that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, last but certainly not least, we have Brad. Brad, buddy, tell us a little bit about your business and you. Hey, I'm Brad. I'm the chief hemp officer of Hippie Butter Hemp Seeds. We sell hemp seed food and hemp seed skin care products. You can find us at hippiebutter.com, H-I-P-P-I-E-B-U-T-T-E-R. And I'm glad to be here. And he's a fun guy and knowledgeable guy. Glad we invited him back. I like it very much. So awesome. Oh, let's thank go ahead you. And jump in. Oh, yeah. No worries. Only say it's true. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first question that we actually have, and actually, Brad, if you'd like to, to kind of chat chat on this one is what is the return on investment on uh, your PR or guest blogging program? Like, do you, how much do you see from it? How much growth in your business? I mean, is it something you find really valuable? Yeah, it's definitely blogging has been one of our biggest growth. I don't have a great number to give you. A boot suite just did a story on us where we've grown 230% over yeah. the last three months from working with different guest uh, bloggers. So yeah. it definitely works. Yeah. 230%, um, well, I would say that's definitely a surefire thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's actually grown so much that we can't really use Bootsuite anymore because it's starting to get too expensive. <laughs> so it, it's sort of a, a catch-22, not catch-22, but, you know, it sort of didn't work out the greatest. But we've been glad to use them, and we've taken all the tools that we learned about blogging and working with bloggers, and awesome. we're still using it every single day. I love it, yeah, and this is something yeah. I want to kind of talk to everyone on this question because a lot of people don't think that there will be a good return on investment with like you know blogger outreach and PR, but it's huge. So how did he, I, know. I was wondering how he chose the bloggers that he partnered with. Just different ones. Uh, Bootsuite actually chooses a few of them for us to write stories, and then different bloggers can show that on their blogs, and it links you up that way. Oh, that's great. And also. Yeah, and what we have done is we started out with, um, we sort of at first sent out our stuff to every single blogger, and that really didn't work out very well for us. Now we ask a series of questions where if they have 25,000 followers, we'll send them samples. If they get 50,000 views a day or 50,000 followers, you know, we'll give them a, a bigger sample and so on. And as they write more and better stories, we up the ante and give them better products and more products. So it's definitely a, a building relationship with all of them. That's great. Some of them are just there for a quick free product, and we really never hear back from them. Right. <laughs> it's really about oh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> so side note, we had someone join us, Alan from yamaclaws.com. Alan, do you mind introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about Yamaclaws. We're going to go ahead and chat your URL to the audience. Who are you? <laughs> Sorry for coming in no late. No worries. Everyone. Um, oh my, my name is Alan. I'm the co-founder of yamaclaws.com. Um, it's actually as simple as it sounds. It's a mashup of a Santa Claus themed yamaka that uh, we sell over the holidays. Um, uh, for the, 
the faux holiday Chrismaka, actually. So it's spelled Y-A-M-A-C-L-A-U-S dot com. It's awesome. a fun gag gift, and uh, it's uh, one of many um, products that my partner and I have uh, manufactured and sold, but one that we've actually seen really great success with on the big com by using big commerce and leveraging big commerce. So excited to be here. It's definitely one of those kooky pr uh, products we have around the office. They're like, have you seen Yamaclaws? Because it's hilarious. So. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So we were just kind of asking about the return on investment with a blogger PR outreach program. Does anybody else have it? We have a 230% like, lift for Hippie Butter. Anybody else have any kind of awesome stats or things that they want to share or a nice victory before we move on to the next question? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it have been. Uh, I think... Um, it's it's uh, for a lot of people. It's actually really hard to m quantify yeah. PR reach. Um, I think that's probably one of the hardest things to quantify when it comes to marketing, especially digital marketing. Um, uh, other than, of course, getting referral traffic if you got written up in a blog or getting affiliate sales, um, PR and branding is a really tough thing to quantify. Yep. But uh, can definitely move the needle if done right and if done. Um, uh, as much as possible, right? Um, so I, I think for us, ROI-wise, um, it, it's it's been I I, I, can't, I can't give you a percentage, but I can tell you that um, from the time that we've spent and we invested in PR and blogger outreach, um, it has driven I'd say at least uh, sixty percent of our sales because we don't do any other advertising online. We don't do any paid advertising, and so a lot of it is word of mouth and through PR. So um, I, I can get into uh, specifics later on, but uh, I think that as a general takeaway, the ROI is quite positive if you can get enough um, noise and buzz around your product. For sure, and it's interesting that you said you're not doing any PPC campaigns. I bet a bunch of people just gasp. But you have that type of product where it's very, um, where, again, around the office, where like, you have to see Yamaclaws. It's just one of those things that kind of spreads itself a little, so you've got that momentum working for you, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we definitely don't have a lot of competition when it comes to PPC <laughs> campaigns, so um, so we have that going for us. But yep. uh, we, we, uh, we think when it comes to our particular, again, we're a very niche and particular sure. product, but um, I think it also helps with SEO, right? So blogger outreach doesn't, and PR um, is, uh, um, it, there's quite a high and positive ROI when it comes to getting um, very uh, deep links and get uh, SEO friendly um, pages up on your site, so. I love it. Awesome. I'm so glad you could join us today. And I understand, yeah. I, I think you might have to duck out early. If anyone needs to, feel free. Um, I think Brad just ducked out so he could adjust his microphone. And he's back already. Yay. Okay. He should be back momentarily. So, next question. Have you successfully built relationships, or excuse me, how have you successfully built relationships with journalists, bloggers in your niche area? So, what tactics did you take? I heard something about uh, Bruce Sweet, but is, has anyone else tried any other tactics? Maybe Paulette or Nancy, do you guys have any tactics you like to use? Uh, that's a great question. I use a lot of what works with knitters are things called knit alongs. So what? it's a it's an interesting concept to people who aren't in the knitting world, but there's a real um, community sense that's built and we do these things where we'll pick a project and say, okay, in two weeks we're gonna launch the knit along and everybody join us and we'll be answering questions, kind of like a hangout, but a lot of it's just posted on the blog and then they can work on the project, they can show pictures of the completed project, but you're knitting this not too difficult project over a period of time with knitters around the world. So it builds a great sense of community and it works extremely well for us. We do about one, one a month and we've even hired somebody within our company to run the knit alongs, but we've hired outside um, bloggers and knitters to be guest uh, knitters for these knit alongs that they, we host. And, so. and you feel special as a guest blogger too. You're like, you want to hear from me? What? Yeah. So it's yeah. Like, too, too challenging <laughs> to get those people, or at least get that momentum going. Right. So, anybody else have any tactics that they like to use? So, knit alongs. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google it now because that sounds awesome and adorable. Anybody else have any other tactics that they found really fruitful or they're maybe kind of hacking the system a little? 
I'm a bit of a newbie when it comes to blogging, so not, oh, okay. not in that way. But um, yeah, we just use a third party um, press release agency, and they just I contact a lot of journalists and everything for us. So oh, that's, um, awesome. we, that's something I've never heard of before. Um, how's that been for you? Is it has it been challenging? Have there been really really good? Uh, we've lost count of the publications we've been Whoa. in. We're, we'll see ourselves on the shelves and everything. So it's really really good. So. Um, thanks to a great looking website as well because they want to refer back to a really uh, nice platform. But yeah, it's, that's it awesome. works really, really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. How did you, did you have any like kind of qualifying questions when you found the agency to make sure you didn't get kind of scammed? I hate to say it. Uh, we went on a trial period first. So oh, yeah, okay. it works really well. So, and when you add up how much we'd be paying to be in a magazine otherwise, it's, it's really beneficial for us. I love it. I need yeah. notes. I love this stuff. No longs, third parties. Oh, I love it. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, let's see. Just really quick, I just want to check in. If people are coming in a little bit late, no worries to the audience members. But if you have questions, feel free to chat them to us, and we will work it into the conversation. I'm not seeing anything coming through at the moment. So Jess, just holler at us and let us know. Awesome. So how do you know what's newsworthy? This is a very common question I get from clients. They're like, I don't have anything to say. My site is boring. Nobody wants to hear about it. So I'd actually love to hear from almost everybody if you're willing, like, round applause. how do you know what is actually newsworthy about your product? You said you actually have a, a holiday season with Pat. Do you do PR throughout the out this season or out throughout the year? Um, how does that kind of work for you? Sorry, was that directed to me with the holiday? Yeah, well, just uh, how do you know what's newsworthy, what to yeah. announce? Yeah. Um, I, th I think um, when it comes to creating content and news, uh, mm -hmm. For us in particular, we, we're not coming out with new products or new versions or... Yeah, you guys uh, have the single product, right? Yeah, exactly. It's one product, so it's actually quite simple for us. We and we actually haven't created a lot of content, so, so that makes it more difficult because we don't have a lot there to pitch new um, bloggers or yeah. reviewers. Um, but if I had to say what, 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 would, uh, what could help anybody out there is to not necessarily focus on making your news interesting for the masses, but know the pain points or the behaviors of your customers um, and cater the content to that, right? So um, it's not like, oh, we released a new, a new Yama clause. It's not really that. It's like, how can Yama clause make your celebration, your holiday celebration more fun? Here's some quick tips on what to do X, Y, Z over the holiday. So I think catering your um, your news, if you will, and your um, and your content uh, to your audience, not to the masses. Um, yeah. Surprisingly, a lot of educational material comes um, are some of the best and easiest. Um, things to announce and to use and leverage when it comes to getting coverage for, uh, from, from, you know, from blogs. So, and gets the highest engagement, right? So yeah. how to's or tips around your product is actually, it's less promotional, but, um, and that's actually great. I think, um, I think it gets more positive engagement. Yeah, I think that's a huge trend right now is educational content to attract new shoppers, keep new shoppers, you know, and anything. It's all about educating them and, and targeting your audience. So I love that you brought that up. Awesome. Um, love it. And how do you know what's newsworthy? Anyone like to kind of contribute as to what they deem newsworthy within their, their company? I know Yamaha is a little bit different. Well, we keep a whiteboard or a big piece of paper with all our blog stories, and we watch our show so media and all our friends and see what they're asking and talking about and then we keep going over our list and when our list matches what everybody's asking, we that's what we create our next blog post out of. That's how we that. come up with all of that. I love it. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. So that's like the easiest editorial calendar. That's awesome. It works yeah. really it is, and we, we may come up with something, you know, six ways to eat toasted hemp seeds and write that down and we may not use it for two months when three or four people might ask us, hey, what? How, I just bought hemp seeds, how should I eat them? And then we'll post that, we'll go, hey, those line up and that's how we do it. Yeah, and I, I sometimes find that that's even easier and uh, to pitch than it would be if like, hey, we got a new product that we just released. Like, if you did something really creative and fun that um, others would like to share and yeah. finding something to read, that's probably gonna get a lot more responses uh, than, you know, your latest, yeah. Uh, feature set or benefit versus product release where they're like, right, another one. You along with everybody else in the world, you know, coming up with something unique and targeted is great. I love it. 
Um, anyone else? Uh, tips on knowing what's newsworthy to uh, to pitch about your business? No? Not seeing any questions from the audience either, just in case? Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a huge struggle. I think uh, Jeff and I, when we wrote this, we were like, yes, absolutely. What is newsworthy? It's a constant question. Or people are afraid to take that leap and just try some stuff out. So educational. Um, and just ask your clients if you're not sure where to start. Those are two really great power tips. I love it. Well, we do well with a oh, lot of um, free patterns as well as, uh, oh. I don't know, he was talking about hemp seeds. And you, you could just come up with a free recipe for hemp seeds. Uh, we do a lot with, okay, here's a ball of yarn. Now they don't know what to do with it. So we have to come up with a quick, easy little project. So we just whip up a little free project and... Um, that gets us a lot of attention on all the social social media networks. Yeah, free, free giveaways are great. I love that. I wouldn't even thought of that. That's great. See, well, even a people... I mean, we do giveaways as well. But this is just like here. If you want the yarn, come here to get the yarn. But we we're giving you this little pattern. Oh, little bundle. Little more like fuzzy bundle. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that as well. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, we already um, oh. actually, one last thing. Um, I think there's a um, a really cool resource. It's called HubSpot. If anybody's heard of HubSpot, they create a lot of great content. Um, but uh, they have this thing called Idea Generator, and it's like a free um, download that you can get. It's a it's a Google spreadsheet, and you can type in different topics and themes, and it'll help you generate ideas to create content. Um, I, we actually use that quite a bit. Uh, early on in the days when we started thinking about, okay, what are all the things that we're eventually going to um, going to write about? And uh, I highly recommend looking it up. It's called Idea Generator. Yeah, we're actually uh, big users of HubSpot at Big Commerce, and I love that. That's a really good thing. I'm going to try it. Yeah. See, everybody's learning. I love it. It's great. <laughs> so we had mentioned, was it Boost Suite or Hoot Suite that we mentioned earlier? Hoot Suite, right? Hoot Suite, yeah. I just want to make sure. So there's two. Um, so we mentioned that earlier, but anyone else use any tools to connect with journalists or bloggers? Um, Jess specifically called out Haro. I don't know if Jess, you want to speak to that or anything. Um, but does, or, do you guys use any tools, or do you just use you know, like your pure no, raw? I hadn't Haro? even heard of that. I'd like to yeah. know more about that. You want to share? Yeah. Um, do any of you guys use Haro, also known as Help a Reporter Out? It's basically an email subscriber list um, that you can then subscribe to. It's I believe run through focus, but you can pretty much subscribe to it for free and you can actually get it. and it's basically a whole list of where it's like all journalists who needs um, who are looking for sources for stories. Um, you can then get it. Um, Haro, H A R O. Um, and I'll send the link to it as, and I'll send the link to it as well. Um, with inside the body of the Google Hangout event, but it's called Haro. And you literally can basically it sends every day at I in the morning, afternoon, and evening time, they'll send out a list of journalists who need sources. And this could be a really cool way to kind of get yourself known as a thought leader um, to the point where you can actually um, really get some pretty cool story leads and it's everyone from small niche blogs to the New York Times. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Harrow yeah, so stands for help a reporter out. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it allows you to go in and also pitch. So, like, if I'm a reporter and I want know I want to write something in my editorial calendar, like about uh, uh, helicopters, I'm going to go and post it on there and say, "Hey, I'm going to write about this. Is, an, is there an expert out there? And does anybody want to share quotes?" And so, you may actually find something based on your category or your niche or your industry. Awesome. Cool. Does anyone cool. want to add any luck using it? Because we used it for six months, and all we got was nonstop, give us free stuff, please. <laughs> I mean, like, literally, our emails just were flooded with, you know, we would love to do a story if you'd send us, you know, your new shampoo. And I mean, it was just literally nonstop. They never wanted to know any of the facts behind what we did. They only wanted our free products. Yeah, we yeah. actually had to bow out. It was so That's awesome. intense. The most luck I've seen with Harrow, and I used to do this in my last job, was actually just providing quotes and thought leadership. That's really what um, Harrow, I think, helps most with. It's not to promote your brand your, or product. It's to build your personal brand and your yourself as a thought leader where you can provide really valuable um, 
you know, just information on a topic that you are an expert about. So it's not necessarily the best place to like say, yeah, here, this product will solve your problem. It's more so like a thought leadership um, tactic. I like it. Yeah that's, yeah, that's how we were using it. And it just didn't, I don't know. It was yeah, it's funny. I actually like for us. talking about that. I totally know what you mean. I, I use a, um, a tool called BuzzStream. Does anybody use that? No. No. Um, B U Z Z Stream. Uh, it's good for link building, but also I use it kind of like a CRM, a client relationship manager for press. Uh, it's, it allows me to kind of, they have this really cool thing called the media buzz marker. So if I found an article on the web that was about Chrismica or about holidays or about yarmulkes, I can click that button and it would automatically generate and pull the author, the date that the article was published, the headline, and add them to a whole list, like almost like a spreadsheet. Um, and then I can remember to reach out to them later. Say, hey, I saw this article that you recently wrote about. Um, check out my product if, you, if you're interested. So it's called BuzzStream. It was actually, I use it quite a bit. You said BuzzStream? I like that idea. Thank you. I'll be trying that too. <laughs> yeah, BuzzStream. I love this. This is something I told Jess. I was like, are you sure we want me to like MC for this? Because I am not super savvy. So it's super funny. I'm like, yeah, this is great. I'm like writing all these notes too. Hilarious. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, uh, the, the cleaners came today. So uh, yeah, fabulous. <laughs> awesome. So oh, getting set up here a little bit, uh, you kind of talked about pitching a, a little bit, and I just wanted to kind of build off of that. Do you guys have any tips for pitching news um, to bloggers or journalists, like to really make sure it's solid? We kind of talked about making it personal and all that kind of stuff, but any other tips for pitching from the audience? <laughs> I think I think the main thing that you guys had mentioned was actually making it authentic and making it something that's unique rather than just product releases. And I really think that's yeah. kind of the biggest element that's kind of nice and basic too. Um, but have you guys had success with certain tactics over others? Yeah, um, we started... Oh, go for it, my friend. Please Sorry go ahead. That. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, we started the Hippie Butter Weekly uh, since we've started doing lots of blogging, and we pick our best blog story over the last week, and that's part of our, our newsletter. We don't send them, hey, check out this sale or buy this product. It's just, you know, him, protein will curb your sugar cravings and things like that. So every newsletter is just informative, and it's our past uh, best blog post, and we only do maybe a half or three quarters of the story and then they have to go to our website to read the, the rest of it if they want to read the last paragraph. So we give them, you know, almost all the juice. And well, people well, seem well. to appreciate that a lot. What and did you call yeah. your newsletter again? The Hippie Butter Weekly. Hippie Butter Weekly. I love it. Yeah, uh -huh. it's been fun. And we try to do it every week, but it's really about every 10 days. <laughs> so it works out. And I we literally, it. yeah. We see the boosts in our traffic and sales and everything from it, so it's actually cool. working out. I love that. That's fantastic. Awesome. Anything, anything else before I move on to the next question? Um, maybe, maybe a couple pointers. Um, so, like, if you're if we're specific to pitching, right, where um, you may or may not have an existing relationship with press. There's a couple of things. I mean, there's a lot of things you shouldn't do. <laughs> there are probably the list is longer for what you shouldn't do than what you should do. But um, I. I couldn't agree anymore with being authentic, but um, I think uh, a rule of thumb is also like know your audience. So don't pitch a hundred bloggers; pitch ten that care and write and um, you know have any interest in what it is that you're trying to pitch. Because the worst thing you can do is get on a spam list and just pitch somebody that, uh, something that they don't even care about. Um, so really know your audience. Um, uh, I think that's my rule number one. Uh, the rule number two that I have is try to keep it simple and, and, and short, but make sure to have a call to action. You'd be surprised how many people I've heard send out pitches, and the call to action is, you know, do you want, do you want to write about it? Or do you want more information? Rather than, would you like to have a conversation? Would you like to learn more? You know, there's, 
it's so odd when people kind of forget to have that last call to action. Like, what should they? What do you want them to do, really? Um, yeah. And ideally, it's to engage and learn more and um, talk to somebody. Maybe it's your founder or or whatever. So that's a couple of small I love tips. That. I think I think CTAs, especially for people who are just starting on uh, starting to sell, it's one of the things that people forget. They're like, oh yeah, I guess I do want people to actually like take action and go buy now or possibly use the coupon, like. It forgets to kind of think that whole experience through. I love it. That's super valuable. I appreciate it. Anything else before we move on? Thoughts? Emotions? No? Okay. Let's go see. I'm like crammed in my boss's office right now. Um, yes, I just want to check in. Is there any are there any questions from the audience at this point? Um, we actually do have one question right now. Great. Actually, do you want uh, to pitch it? Go yeah. for it. Um, and one question from Ian. Thank you for tuning in, Ian. Um, that one question is, how many blog, to all of you guys, how many blog posts do you guys create a week? Uh, I create about three or four a week. It just depends on the week and what we have going on. Yeah, and, and they can be short and sweet. That sounds like a lot. Like, are they like 800 words, 200 words, 1,000, billion? It depends. If we have a knit along going, it could be 20 pictures and a whole tutorial, but if we're just doing uh, a write-up about a new product or a little free pattern, it's usually just one photo and a paragraph or two. Interesting. Awesome. Cool. Anyone else? How, how often do we, do we bust people for not blogging frequently enough? Totally busted me because I'm like... <laughs> I'm like the worst person you can ask because it's such a holiday product and I have three other jobs. <laughs> so I, it's, but if I have to, if I had to give a recommendation, it'd be at least once a week. Um, I do that for my other company. I do two blogs a week. Um, they could be even curation pieces, which basically means you take other news and turn it into like and curate it to create a really fun kind of write up of what's happening in your industry around the web. Um, but it, it, yeah, I, I, would, <laughs> I would definitely say try to at least keep content fresh and keeping it alive with at least one post a week. Well, one thing it seems like I'm a I'm a retailer, so I buy hundreds of products, thousands of products from other manufacturers, and I retail them. Where it looks like the rest of you are all manufacturers that are just promoting one or two products. So it definitely is harder. My stuff comes in, I get new products every week. So I'd be an idiot not to promote it as much as I do. Whereas yours is a little bit more of an uphill battle. I know my sister works on the wholesale end of business and she's always trying to come up with something new, but she promotes maybe once or twice a month as opposed to the daily grind that I try to, that I try to engage. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just your customer base is different. Yeah. And she the also customer. promotes to both her wholesale customer and her retail customer. Interesting. I mean, your business models are different. I, I would say for a small yeah. business, like one time a week is definitely ideal, especially for SEO purposes. It's very much like the, the regular cadence is what's really important for like getting your website found. As far as peeling to your, it depends on what your kind of CTA or like what your goals are. Um, if you're trying to get more traffic, definitely post regularly. Um, if you're trying to keep people around, keep them engaged for you know blogging and all that good stuff. Um, the, the more frequently, the better. I, I mean, you can't you can't do enough good stuff so long as it's quality, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Paulette, actually, how how frequently do you actually uh, post per week? Maximum probably one. I'm really bad to be asking it's as perfect. well. One's great. That's awesome. And yeah, you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to do a bit more, but I'm not really um, savvy when it comes to that sort of thing. I'm too. I think I'm a bit too passionate about our brand to be the one that writes about it because it can be very biased. I tend to be quite You'd protective. You're writing of it. like a novel every single week and just like submitting all yeah. the questions. I really can. I can go on and on. <laughs> That's what makes the best blog posts, though. The, pa the, yeah. uh, the passion you have is what's going to sell it the best. You know That's what, honestly, true. if we still were down with like handwriting stuff, you'd have like, it'd be like tearing the paper apart and like we could dissect your passions for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to check in. Brad, we can see you. Can we hear you? Are you there? If you can hear me, we can't hear you. Perhaps, Jess, if you could chat him just to make sure he's alive and well over there. That'd be awesome. Don't want anyone dropping off the call. Cool. This is awesome. So, 
Ooh, this is a good one. Yes, I love this question. So to anyone at all, do you guys have a press page on your website or perhaps like a media kit, which is like bio, pictures, background um, about your business, things like that, so that you know PR and bloggers and stuff, they can come and kind of find a central location for information? Is it on your site? Do you have it elsewhere? How do you guys kind of format that? Anyone? We've got an About Us page. Okay. Um, got, we have a press releases page. I'll probably haven't added to it for a while. I okay. tend to be <laughs> too busy to pop that up. Um, yeah, so we have media pages, um, press release pages. So wherever we can pop, even a gallery, um, yeah, just pretty much something to suit anything that comes in that's newsworthy. So, yeah, but it's not messy. It's very structured. I like that a lot. Um, anybody else have any tactics around that to, to deliver, you know, the staples? I hear you, Alan. You unmuted. I, I unmuted. I just wanted to um, say, again, I don't, um, I don't um, but that was actually um, very specific to my product. I didn't because I wanted um, people to reach out <laughs> for, uh, for media inquiries and specifically for images because we had our product was, um, uh, you know, viewed on television, so we just had to go through some legal stuff. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, I would highly recommend having a uh, not just a press page, but um, having information and or materials for people to download and and view. Not necessarily because they're actually going to use it all the time, but because it gets you in the habit of. Uh, and practice of knowing how to be succinct about your value proposition, about how to talk about your product, and like what your unique selling proposition is. So, for example, a lot of people forget, like you know, what are your two, 20, 50, and 100 word descriptions of your site and um, or your product. And uh, I think it gets you in that habit of thinking that way, and and is really mm -hmm. great for when you need to speak on behalf of your company with press. So. Um, I definitely am all for it. I love it. That's a really great, uh, like, training yourself at the start to get all that stuff together, and then also if, if you get a phone call, you're like, here you go. I got it right now, and then I'll, I'll send you exactly what I said in an email afterwards. Yeah. That's great. Very professional, too. Any other thoughts on a media kit or how you guys kind of work with those materials? No? Okay. Any questions from the audience, Jess? Outstanding? We're good. Okay, sweet. Moving on. All right. I'm like so beyond tired right now. I've had his coffee today, so forgive oh, me. Oh, I just wake up. <laughs> I know. So I'm saying, I'm like, eating dinner? What? <laughs> okay. Uh, once you earn your P, once you have earned your PR win and victory, um, what tactics do you use to keep the momentum going? So when you have something that's really successful, how do you keep building off of it? Anyone at all? Thoughts or emotions? Um, one of the obvious is leverage it on your site. Um, like, for example, on our on our homepage, we have it, you know, as seen on, and we list the logos. Um, of course, don't lie; make it honest. It should be <laughs> an actual um, destination that either reviewed or has used your product or our service. Um, I think sharing on social media. I we've always retweeted or reposted. Uh, cool quotes, fun comments, uh, reviews. Um, you know, I, I think that that's probably that adds the most credibility to to what you're doing is if you can um, leverage what people are saying about your product. So absolutely, I'd say social media is one of them. On your site, maybe even um, contacting people as a follow up, like saying. Nice. Thank Sorry, I don't know if we lost somebody there. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. So you had said contact people, and then you actually cut out. Do you mind going back? Oh, I actually think it's um, it's completely okay, and to contact those who have you reviewed your product, say you didn't reach out to them as unsolicited. Reach out to them and say thank you for sharing their thoughts with their readers, and and if you can link here, maybe they forgot to put a link, or maybe uh, you want to you know do another follow up review. I think it's totally okay to do that as well. So. Keep, keep the momentum going. Yeah, ask for what you want. If you want a link in there, if you want another mention, if you're like, hey, can you throw this in? And hey, can we do this again? No harm in asking, right? Awesome, I love it. I've I even... Thoughts on people. Oh, my free product is awful. 
<laughs> What'd you say? I know so, sometimes I've actually been able to leverage my products. Say, hey, we we're going to do a giveaway. So, for example, we had this one website. It was called J Style, um, and we gave away, we gave them twelve yama clauses. Um, uh, and each day they gave a, they did a contest to give one away. So maybe there's really fun contests and promotions that you can run with sites in addition to review, right? Uh, I think it's a great way to get your product out there. I love that. Yeah, don't be afraid to give some stuff. I love it. This is like the best session ever. You guys are awesome. I love it. Any other yeah. thoughts? Well, if you think about? of how much, if you think of how much advertising would cost you compared to the cost of giving away a few of your products Absolutely. and what you'll get in return, it, the payoff is enormous. Yeah. Um, and think about it. I mean, Alan here is not even doing PPC, so he's just leveraging all of the, you know, all of the brand awareness that's uh, buzzing around his product. So it's kind of, I love this. This is great. This was not a great day, but this is turning out to be a great, great day. <laughs> I love it. So awesome. Cool. That's a really valid point is like, you know, doing doing some things that may seem like they're going to cost you something up front in the long run is probably going to end up saving you some money. You can do it smartly, of course. So, uh, Jess, just want to check in on questions from the audience before we kind of wrap today. We're good. Come on, audience. Give us some good ones. I want these guys sweating. Um, so last but not least, we just want to share power tips, words of wisdom, uh, possibly avoiding pitfalls or things that you guys did wrong, anything that you're like, holy cow, I wish I could share this, or I wish I could have told myself five years ago, one year ago, 12 years ago, um, to do this a little bit differently, just kind of closing thoughts or words of wisdom, and whoever would like to attack that, go right for it. I just think be the best you can be. If you're always that. doing the best you can do, yeah, um, you've never got anything to worry about. You can be totally honest and open with your with your product and your service. So always do the best you can do and you, you can't go wrong. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I like the end. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brad, do you guys have thoughts yeah. on closing words of wisdom or pitfalls you advise against? Yeah, people love free stuff. So we would like to do the giveaway with bloggers all the time. That's That gets some more excited than if you do reviews. Um, and we even offer instead of shipping it to them and have them, them ship it someplace else, we let them run the contest and then they can um, just send us the address and we send the product off. That way they get the, the whole hippie butter shebang and all that kind of stuff. And we also, when people uh, go out of their way to write a review, we contact them and we'll give them a free backpack or a free coupon code or a free shipping yeah. code. So we always reward them for writing something for us. And don't use Fiverr. I don't know. I had some internet problems. I'm sorry. About that. <laughs> don't use Fiverr for reviews. It will only backfire on you every time. Uh, I've seen <laughs> it happen to down. other people. Yeah, we haven't done it so far, and we're not going to plan on doing it. And um, the other thing that we found really useful is writersaccess.com. They have a lot of great bloggers that can help you pick topics out and write the topics for you. <laughs> That's all we really have to say about all of this. Well, that was quite a lot, so thank you. I appreciate it. No, I love the common theme that I think everyone has mentioned each time, like, across the board, is like, don't forget to thank your customers and, like, do the right things. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's so valuable. So, any other words of wisdom, perhaps from Alan or Nancy? Um, I, I guess I, I would. You guys said a lot of great, great nuggets there. Um, I think uh, the, I'd leave off on um, being genuine, and I think it definitely falls into what both of you had said. But more importantly, genuine about your brand voice and your product. So I don't. I, I, that we're actually doing a redesign to get rid of some of the language because it doesn't necessarily fall into our our voice. And I'll give you an example. Um, when I pitch people about what Christmica is, I don't say that it's the newest, best holiday accessory you'll ever have. I say it's a fun mashup that is a gag gift and it's going to make you laugh. And um, and that's just because I don't want to BS anyone and I don't want to overpromise. And I think just being genuine about really what you're doing, um, uh, writers appreciate that and they can actually relate to that. So um, be genuine and it'll get you really far. And not only writers will like it, your shoppers will too. So. Yeah. Which is the bottom line there. So <laughs> let's see. Nancy, do you have any closing thoughts or words of wisdom? No, like I said, our, our formula is a little bit different because we're engaging 
we're direct to the consumer as opposed to more of a wholesale angle. Um, so we don't have as you know we don't have one particular baby that we're, we're we're trying to promote thousands of products. So we promote them through just giveaways, uh, knit alongs, any fun way we can engage our community of knitters. That's what we do, and our whole approach is quick, easy, fun to make, and keep it light and simple. So quick, easy, fun. Yes. I like. That. I'm feeling so motivated. I wish we would have done this the first thing in the morning. Man, this is awesome. Well, um, yes, yes, last but not least, are there any questions outstanding from the audience? I think we're good. Okay. If anybody has any last minute tips, any more? I learned a lot on this. I learned a lot. This was a good, a good uh, hangout. I have a whole page here and back. Yeah. <laughs> and I work here. I mean, there are definitely some things like I know the basic stuff, but like the little hacks and tools and all kinds of good stuff. And I love hearing things in, in y'all's words too, you know, to kind of from a client's perspective of, of what you're seeing and feeling. So it's always really nice. Well, Big Commerce it. is great, and I really appreciate everything you guys do from a daily effort of the blog posts and the email newsletters and just engaging all of us all the time to create a community for what we do is really huge. So thank you. Just as your heart hurt now? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, we so appreciate you guys coming out tonight and appreciate you guys being at Big Commerce too and taking your time out today. So thank you audience for joining us. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. No, thank you, thank you.